Welcome! In this tutorial, we will see how to use Excel's data analysis tool to construct a confidence interval on mu, the true mean. You should be familiar with constructing confidence intervals from your statistics class. If not, please review the basic concepts of confidence interval estimation. You can view my video or numerous other videos on YouTube that cover that subject. If you recall, to construct a confidence interval on mu, you use x bar, the sample mean, as a point estimate for mu, the population mean. But a point estimate is just one number, a single point to estimate the true number. Wouldn't it be more reasonable to give an interval as an estimate instead of just one number? For example, instead of saying the mean for a distribution of grades is estimated at 75, we can say it is somewhere between some lower number and some higher number, around 75. What we can do is add and subtract some number, say 5 points, to give a more reasonable guess as an interval, within which we believe the true mean exists. So here I added 5 points and I subtracted 5 points from the point estimate, and now I have an interval of between 70 and 80. So now we believe with some sort of confidence that the true mean is somewhere between 70 and 80. This is what is known as a confidence interval estimate. This portion that we add and subtract from the sample mean is called the margin of error. The formula for doing this is shown here. You should be familiar with this formula from a previous video. We have x bar, the sample mean, and then plus or minus a margin of error, and the margin of error is z of alpha divided in half, and then sigma over the square root of n, which is the standard error. This formula is used for the example of sigma known. When sigma is unknown, you would simply replace z with a t, and you would replace sigma with s, and you would look up the value in the t table instead of the z table. But the structure is the same for confidence intervals. It is always x bar plus or minus some margin of error. Okay, now let's see how we would do this in Excel. All right, let's take a look at this data file that I have in Excel. Here you can see all sorts of student data that I've collected. Let's create a confidence interval on the grade column. So to get started, go over to the Data tab, click, then go over to the right where it has Data Analysis Tool. If you don't have the Data Analysis Tool installed, then check out a video I have on how to install the Data Analysis Tool. Click on the Data Analysis Tool, and then scroll to where it has Descriptive Statistics right here. Okay, and then click OK. All right, now we have to put in the input range on what we want to do a confidence interval on, and I want to do it on grades on exam. So what I'm going to do is select the column by clicking in the first cell and then pressing Control, Shift, and the Down key. And what that does is it selects the entire column. You can see here that C1 through C51 was selected. Okay. Now here, you can see I have label grade on exam in the first row, so we have to check off this box, label in the first row. The output range I want on a new worksheet, so that's good. We want summary statistics, and we want the confidence level. Now here, you can change this to any percent you want. You can change it to a 99% confidence interval. I want a 95% confidence interval, and so I type in 95%. And that's it. Now I hit OK. OK. And I have a new sheet here. And this new sheet, let me just expand it so you can see it a little better. OK. We have the mean. We have the standard error. We have the median, mode, standard deviation. Now the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. We have count of 50. So the standard error is 10.7075 divided by the square root of 50. Remember the standard error is the standard deviation equal to the standard deviation, that's this cell, B7, right, divided by, and then we have the square root of, so let's do SQ R, RT, 
the square root of, and then it would be this number here, 50, close parentheses. So you can see here, I put the formula in for the standard error, x bar divided by the square root of n, and I have that here, and if we hit the return key, you can see we get the same number, 1.514, and here you have the same number. What is our confidence interval? Well, we don't have the confidence interval here. What this really is, is what is called a margin of error. So, margin of error is what is here in this cell. So we can say equal, and then whatever is this cell. That is our margin of error for 95% confidence. That number is the margin of error. Okay, so let's type in the lower confidence limit, and let's do the upper confidence limit. Okay, so to get the lower confidence limit, we have x bar, so x bar is b3, 78.96, and then minus the margin of error, and then we're going to do plus the margin of error. So the margin of error is 3.04 and that gives us the lower confidence limit and for the upper confidence limit we do the same thing except we add so equal x bar and then plus the margin of error and there we have our lower limit and our upper limit for the level of confidence all right so here you have it this is the confidence interval on the mean this is a 95 percent confidence interval by adding and subtracting the margin of error i get 75.917 as the lower limit and 82.003 as the upper limit so we have 95 percent confidence that the true mean is somewhere between those two numbers or somewhere within that interval all right that's it for confidence interval estimation using Excel's data analysis tool. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something.